you find your pursuits are not in the direction of God's joy in your life, be careful. Because the very things, the very things at times that we seek, when you find the joy of God is not there, wisdom requires for you to relook at your choices. How would you explain someone who leaves his family in the name of going for greener pasture, like that brother, leaves his family, leaves his wife, leaves his children, and goes away, becomes an absentee father, and the children grow up resenting God, having nothing to do with God, no matter how strong your finish is financially. It's not a strong finish. It's not a strong finish. And this is why when God gives us joy, it's because God knows you need something that will carry you and sustain you for a lifetime. And joy is one of those things that has the ability to carry a man for a lifetime, to preserve your posterity. You see, you, you, you've got to learn to receive and walk and practice the joy of God. Look at Psalm, 11, Psalm 16, verse 11. Just see how important joy is. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 16 and verse 11. Hear the psalmist. He says, thou will show me the path of life. Look at that. Not the path of my career. Uh-uh. Not the path of my marriage. But he says the path of life. Why? Because life is the combo. Life is the sum total. And what is in that path? He says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. In God's presence is fullness of joy. Look at that. That means if you truly know God, you cannot be a stranger to joy. You can't be a stranger to joy if you truly know God. Because he says, in God's presence is fullness of joy. And when you read Galatians 5.22, you notice it tells us joy is a fruit of the Spirit. That means he's talking about that joy. The one that has nothing to do with your circumstances. The one that gives you contentment. Do you understand? The one that makes you, even when you hear to say, this one went to South Africa. In three years, he bought three houses. But when that joy is not there, you're, you're like, I, I'm better off being with God. God will take me where I'm supposed to be. Why? Because that joy, that joy stays the test of time. Why? Because, listen, he says, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, he says, is your strength. Why? Because joy comes from your spirit. Joy doesn't come from your circumstances. It doesn't come from your situations. No. Happiness is the one that is um, a product of circumstances and situations. You are happy because your brother is getting married. But joy, joy is an innate um, reflection of your spirit. You see, joy emanates from your human spirit. Why? Because joy comes from God. He says in the presence of God is fullness of joy. Joy comes from God. It draws. Joy is extracted from God. So when you are born again, you are born with joy in your life. Why? Because the spirit of God is the one that brought forth that eternal life in you. And this is why, now that the joy of the Lord is in you, God wants you to learn how to practice and live in that joy. Are, are you getting that? Yeah. Look at Matthew 13, verse 20, just to show you how important the joy of the Lord is in your life. Matthew 13, verse 20. Matthew 13, verse 20. Okay. He says, but he that received the seed into the stony places... The same is he that heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it. Now, he's showing us about the parable of the sower and how that if the word of God is going to bear fruit in your life, you need to receive it with joy. Look at that. Joy is the condition, the platform for joy, for, for the word of God to bear fruit, to work in your life. It needs an atmosphere. It needs an atmosphere. And joy is that atmosphere. Yes. Joy is that atmosphere that makes the word of God to bear fruit. Yes. 